Hello and welcome. I'm Monica Admenta and welcome to the APS 30. It's the middle of summer and a lot of people may be enjoying being away from school. A lot of others may be counting the days until classes resume again. We thought it would be the perfect opportunity to talk with you about some jewels of APS, some schools that perhaps you may not even be aware of. I'd like to introduce our guest today. First, we have Mr. Mark Tolley. Mark is the director of APS charter schools, magnet schools, and schools of choice and has been with the district, I think, probably about eight years now? Um, six years this time, but six, I've okay. been in and out two or three times. <laughs> Pleasure to have you here, Mark. Also joining us is Katarina Sandoval. Katarina joined us in January. It Was it January already? That's correct. And you are the new executive director of the Office of Innovation. Welcome to you both. I thought we'd start a little bit with charters because I think there's some confusion in the general public about Albuquerque Public Schools and the approach to charters. So Mark, your office for years now has helped the district really understand when a school, a charter school, needs to be authorized by the district, what that may entail. Tell us a little bit about your work. Well. Charter schools were started kind of as an alternative to uh, the public schools. And uh, at first, local authorizers, which would be the local district, are the ones that actually authorized or allowed these charter schools to exist. About four years ago, the state uh, public education commission became a second authorizer. So since then, it's become a little confusing with the real proliferation of charter schools within Albuquerque. I believe this fall there'll be 57 or 58 of them. Uh, our office has uh, authorized schools through APS that we find fit a niche, uh, a special area, and can serve our students the best. And how many charters does APS authorize now? We currently have 19 with an additional coming to us in the fall. Okay, and that brings us to Schools of Choice and the Office of Innovation. Katarina, you joined us. You were the principal at another school here in town, a charter school, mm -hmm. and your mission now is to help the district really nurture the idea of choice and find still more options for people out there who for one reason or another don't um, necessarily choose to send their kids to our more traditional schools. That's right, Monica. Um, the Charter Act of New Mexico that was passed by our state legislature in 1999 was really meant to allow innovation in a public school setting. And so South Valley Academy, um, we were fortunate to be one of the first char charter schools to open in the state in collaboration with APS and have been in operation since uh, August 2000. And my job now in, um, in the Office of Innovation with the district is to really bring back to scale throughout the district some best practices. Um, that includes best practices in a small school setting, um, how we can best meet the needs of students through school culture, um, innovative practices that involve instruction directly in the classroom or even school governance. And so that's the, the job that I'm charged with right now at the district. What do you think, and this is to, to both of you, what's most challenging at this point? Because I think um, anyone, you know, at any given time, it's not unusual to have a community where 80% of the whole general population don't have kids in school, school age kids. So for their People with kids in school, I think the issues maybe are a little better understood, but there's a whole general population out there that maybe doesn't have the need to know as great. What do you think is the biggest challenge anymore and the way things have changed and how choice is available and how information gets out to parents and students, even grandparents, so they can make the choices that best fit their lives? Sure, I think we're in a time now where the district and large urban school districts like APS have realized that the one large comprehensive high school um, doesn't meet all the needs of all of its students. And so really we need to have a portfolio of choice for parents, have various pathways to graduation, um, pathways of choice if you will. So for some families that might be a STEM pathway. Um, our city right now is, in lots, is, is well poised to really build industry around STEM which is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Um, so if a family really wanted to pursue a STEM pathway from kindergarten through 12th grade, what would that look like in our district? That's something that Mark and I are working on right now. Um, fine arts, if that was a real passion for a student and a, and a family, what would that pathway look like? Um, 
there's a whole variety of different pathways and choices for families and I think right now the district is building that portfolio and now our challenge is to really get the word out to families and communities about the various options that they have for their children. Yeah, I believe that kids haven't changed much, but the world's changed. So uh, there needs to be a lot of different choices where in the past you went to the, your neighborhood school all your life and uh, then you went home after school and did whatever. Now there's just so many choices out there. Being, kids are being inundated with technology and sort of looking more and more to a tailored educational program. So uh, our mission is to provide these choices for these kids and keep them coming to school and get them degreed and moving on. And I think it's really important to note that we're saying to continue to build on that portfolio because New Futures is an alternative school, but some could look at that, um, you know, very much the same sort of model that charters have come about. New Futures actually came to the district in the mid-70s. Last year we opened IB at Sandia High School, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to double enrollment there um, this next year. We have Next Gen. We have the virtual E Academy. There all sorts of programs out there and now we're looking to really um, expand more. You mentioned STEM, Katarina. Are there other, you said music, fine arts, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. What do we know from um, you know our conversations with parents in the community that really seems to, to resonate? Not just the choice, but what other things, not just the specific topic of the school or the concentration, but what other things do we know parents and students are looking for these days? Um, I think parents and, and students are really looking for uh, safe schools, uh, a school where when you drop off your child in the morning, you can feel confident that the adults there, or at least one adult, really is an advocate for your child. They know your, your child by first and last name. They know you as a parent. They know the family. And just that confidence that my child is known by the school and isn't just going to be kind of shuffling through um, in a large school setting and may, may fall through the cracks or, or feel lost or overwhelmed. So I think parents are really looking for a, a school community. A sense of community. A sense of community, absolutely. And I think from what we've seen going to uh, school fairs that they really feel that our greatest need right now is to address that at middle schools which is where uh, Kata comes in with the work we've started around looking at the, the STEM and dual language STEM and addressing some uh, needs really for middle school students. And you gave me the perfect hook to talk about the school fair. We'll talk about that in a minute, but before we move off this uh, other topic, there were some challenges early on, and I think maybe anyone listening might be interested in knowing if you have a child who will attend um, one of our magnet schools or one of our schools of choice, do they still have the opportunity to be involved in the things that a larger comprehensive school would offer, such as band or sports? What have we done around that big question? Absolutely. Um, I'll use one of our high schools of choice, Next Gen Academy, which is co-housed um, at Del Norte's campus. So if it's a, a beautiful building that sits right next to Del Norte High School and students who attend Next Gen can participate in the athletic program, the music program, the extracurricular program at Del Norte High School. So you get best of both worlds. You get to go to a small school environment. Um, Next Gen has a focus on project-based learning using uh, technology uh, throughout. And so if a family or a child or student really wanted the experience of a small school setting but have access to all the amenities that come with a large comprehensive high school, they can still do that. And of course, even with our charters, there's many of the charter schools don't offer some of the extracurricular activities, the NMAA sanctioned activities that a large school would. They can participate in that activities at their home high school and they would just come in and talk to uh, you know, our um, athletics department or the um, athletic director at their local school. I haven't yet mentioned uh, College and Career High. Over at the CNM main campus, which we opened a year ago, had our first graduation this year, and I think that's just another amazing um, school of choice. As the mother of two uh, college students, I really wish that program had been around when they were in school, which wasn't that long ago, by the way, but um, only because it's such a safe 
savings. I, I mean, I don't know if most people understand that if you're in high school, because dual credit is nothing new to the district, but having a school that's a 50-50 model, the students have to be enrolled 50% in high school and 50% in their uh, college classes, and not pay textbooks, not pay fees, not pay any of that is just an amazing offering. I, I know that both of you have been out there to visit. Is there anything particular about that school that you'd want to share? Well, I think don't understate um, the advantage of a, of a young kid acclimating himself to college before they went full time. In the past, you went to high school, graduated, and you dropped off into university or college, and that first year is always a struggle. These kids are not only saving money by getting these classes, but they're, they're being acclimated to the school, so when they, when they do graduate from high school, they fit right in and just go seamlessly on. And what I love about College and Career High School is that it has a dual diploma, dual graduation. So when you graduate from College and Career High School, you graduate with a high school diploma and an associate's degree. So it's a very unique, exciting program, and it's really meant for students who are ready to have a taste of college. They're accelerating. They want to start to get a taste of what it feels like to be a college student, but still have that support that a high schooler needs. If you're a parent at this stage, or a grandparent, or um, a guard, guardian, and you're watching and you're thinking, how, I really didn't know that all of this was going on, how do I best educate myself? How does someone out there, maybe their kids are just starting school, maybe they're in school, maybe they're looking for something different, what's the best approach in figuring out what these programs are, maybe going to visit and getting information um, to make choices? I would highly encourage families to visit um, at our APS home website. We have a Schools of Choice link. If you go to that, you will see a vast array of their choices from elementary through high school. There's a description of each high school or at each school of choice. You can click on that and it'll automatically link you to that school of choice website. There's lots of information, contact information. We would highly encourage families to start with a website. And if you wanted to call somebody at the school staff, arrange a visit, we would absolutely love that. I think it's a great way for families to start their own information to understand all the choices that we have in the district. And of course, our numbers are on there for our office, and they can call and we'll answer any questions we can. It's APS.edu, and I believe we, we have that on the screen. And also, once you get to APS.edu, just go to Schools of Choice, and you should be able to get lots of information. What about um, acceptance to these? I know that many of the charter schools have limited enrollment, and that has to do with the fact that in order to be a magnet school or sometimes a charter, enrollment is limited. Is this by lottery? Do you have to get a transfer? Transfer? Does it differ? How do you go about figuring that out? I'll say something briefly about the charters and let Kanta pick up the discussion about our magnets, but the charter schools are all lottery based. So it's pretty much first come, first serve. If there's a waiting list, they have an actual lottery to pick for those slots. They usually do it in the spring, so you need to look at this information early before the next year and find uh, what schools interest you. And very similar, our magnets are doing something now too, so. Yes, our magnets are pure magnets, um, which are schools that don't have any attendance uh, or neighborhood boundaries. So that means if you are living in one part of the city and the school's located in a completely different part, you still have the same opportunity to attend that school as any other family living in the city. And so we're moving in a direction where families would enter a lottery through the district to attend these schools. Um, but in addition to that lottery, the schools have individual enrollment requirements because a lot of our programs have specialized, pro uh, they meet, as, as Mark said, a, a particular niche. And so we want to make sure that families are choosing a school that really suits the needs of their child and that they're happy and will be successful there. So in addition to putting in uh, an, uh, an application, it'll be available online. Um, we're going to start our recruitment and marketing strategy this fall. Um, and we'll have more information about that. But the schools themselves will also do some outreach with families to make sure it's the right fit. We talked briefly, we didn't actually talk, I just mentioned it, but I, I know that you're very excited about an event coming up. Uh, I think it's, is it January now, or did we move up to November? December. December, I was in, <laughs> in, in between, I was close. Uh, our first ever Schools of Choice Fair, which we're gonna hold at the Convention Center. Uh, Katha, tell us a little bit about what you hope to accomplish with that event. 
Very, very excited. It's going to be the first annual School of Choice Fair for Albuquerque Public Schools. Um, the City of Albuquerque has been fantastic about collaborating with us on this event. It will be at the Convention Center, centrally located for families. And we hope to showcase all of our schools of choice. And we will be sort of um, headlining our two STEM middle schools that will be opening up in school year 2015-16. So stay tuned for more information about those schools. We're really excited. Um, it's an opportunity for families, including students, to come learn more about the different pathways of choice that we have throughout the district, feeder patterns that we're building, um, so that families can really look at if there's something that I'm passionate about that I think is going to best suit the needs of my child, how can I pursue that from kindergarten all the way until graduation? Mark, you want to add anything about the fair? No, we're excited. We've, we've seen several cities do something like this and for Albuquerque to really sell and for APS to sell our choices is, is an exciting concept. So we want to bring families in and, and show off a little bit. And we're going to do our very best to wallpaper of the entire city with the information so again people can go to aps.edu and look for the information as we go into the new school year you know part of what's happening is exciting and part of it um, for a large school district like Albuquerque is also a little tricky at times because while we continue to introduce new choices we still support our more traditional schools out there so I'm wondering as people listen to this um, conversation and, and maybe are introduced to the idea for the first time they might be wondering in in the perfect world how does all this work out is there a big enough client base? Do we have enough customers? Does Albuquerque have enough school-age children to support a system with charter schools, magnet schools, traditional schools? How do we hope this works out? Well, I, I think that the clientele, in this case students and families, determine what your priorities are. So um, as, as we offer these choices, the market will determine what we really pursue and, and strengthen. There's always going to be, I think, a need for the big comprehensive high school, no students. But there is a greater need for these other type schools. So as we explore this, uh, the market creates the needs. So I, I believe that um, we'll try to address the needs as best we can and students will vote by their attendance. I also think that the, the way we're approaching creating pathways of choice, if you will, within the district is, is really doing it in a sustainable way. So as an example, um, we have the International Baccalaureate program that is co-housed at Sandia High School. So it's a very specialized program. You actually get a world-renowned diploma that's recognized internationally. Um, it's highly rigorous college prep. And it's for a group of students and families who are looking for that kind of preparation. Rather than the district invest millions of dollars in a standalone facility to house the school, we're doing it in one of our existing facilities. So we really are being thoughtful and, in, and intentional about using existing resources, aligning resources in such a way that the work is sustainable, but we are creating more choice. We're also excited about um, this fall, Cibola High School is one of the only high schools in the state that will be offering the um, college AP, Advanced Placement Program, known as Capstone. It will work very similar to IB in the sense that students who want to uh, do college rigorous prep through AP, Advanced Placement Program, can attend Cibola High School. So again, we're looking at providing choice in a way that's sustainable, that's really um, smart growth, if you will. We don't want to go and build necessarily 10 or 12 um, brick and mortar buildings or schools, but providing programs that are innovative, that provide a variety of pathways for families in the facilities that we have. How difficult is it to really head out and try to, to the best of your ability, to the fullest potential of the district, to meet the needs of all students in, in an approach of which you really are, you said it earlier, to sort of tailor the curriculum, tailor the schools because with, you know, 86, 87, 89, I'm not sure where we are, thousand students, 14 percent of our general population being special ed. Um, from special ed and special needs to the uber academic kids that you just uh, mentioned in, in the capstone program, how is it possible that one school district can make all of this happen? I think <laughs> a genie in a bottle. I don't know. 
<laughs> no, that's a great question, Monica. And I think that we are in a position right now to really try to think about that question in new ways, maybe ways we haven't thought about before. We know that building a more robust portfolio of choice is part of the answer. Uh, we know that we've got to engage with our clientele. And so one example is on June 17th, um, the district will host a community dialogue uh, that's open to parents, to students, to family members, to community organizations about middle school innovation um, because that is a place we're starting to really look at. But we're cognizant that we've got to have open conversation and dream collectively together. What would an ideal middle school look like for families in Albuquerque? Um, what are components we haven't thought about? What are parents looking for in an ideal middle school? And so I think as we move forward in this work, we're gonna learn um, and we'll be able to build it off of the work that we're doing now and move in directions maybe we haven't even thought about yet. And it is a monumental task, but mm -hmm. what choice do we have? This is, this is very, very important work. These are our children. So we want to provide them the best education possible and, and we believe that APS and through these schools of choice, we're going to do that. When you meet these parents and students who are looking for, for options, do you find that um, a lot of times it is more to do with what the parent wants than the student? Is there a balance there? How involved should the parent be? I, I think the parents really want what's best for their children. So I, I think you find the, the students themselves guiding and the parents just want to make sure this is the right choice for them and that it's a strong choice and as, as Katta said earlier, that it's a safe place, that they're involved, they're looked after and that they're engaged in learning. And otherwise, I think most of the parents we see um, let the children kind of guide as long as they're in a place where they will be learning. I think a common denominator for many of our parents and families is that parents really want their child to be safe and happy and, and that they're learning. At the end of the day, I think that that, no matter if their child has special needs, um, if their child is the uber academic, as you mentioned, um, if their child is involved in sports, I think the common denominator as parents is, is my child safe? Is my child happy? Is my child learning? And I think that as long as we have those outcomes as our true north, the district can provide a variety of ways to get there. And, you know, we've mentioned that obviously the first, um, <coughs> excuse me, the first mission here is to get every student through uh, APS with the option of having all doors open. But there's something greater here too, I, I think, and um, we talk about it a, a lot at, at different levels, but maybe don't always get hurt. Public education is really important for a community. People look at a city when they're coming in. We're thrilled to have our graduation rates up to 73.3%. Do you believe that adding um, you know, an, another category of choice in a district like this will continue to draw more people here? You know, Katha and I have talked about this a lot, and there's always the, well, you have to bring in a lot of business to provide good education. Well. We're going to provide good education in hopes of bringing in business. It's got to go one or the other. And so we're going to try to provide the best education we can to make the city stronger, our students stronger, our, our uh, families stronger. And so I, I think it's extremely important work that we're providing these choices. Absolutely. One of the um, part of the work that I've been doing is really trying to reach out to partner with. Um, the city, for example, the economic advisement officer, Gary Opadal there, to say, you know, what is the city thinking about in terms of future industry? Where are the jobs going to be for our children and our grandchildren? And how can Albuquerque Public Schools prepare um, our children to be the recipients of those jobs? We know that New Mexico has a need for about 50,000 mathematicians and scientists statewide. I want APS to be the number one provider, the pipeline, if you will, of the next generation of scientists and engineers for our state. So it's doing the work in collaboration with the city, with the county, with um, higher ed to really think about next generation. I think that is, is going to put us in the best position for doing our very best work. And you both know as you go around the city and meet with business and community organizations and the rest, the one question um, we always get, I, I know what my answer is, but I'd be curious to yours, pe to hear yours. People generally want to know, how can they help? 
how can they be a part of changing um, the whole academic picture so that it's even stronger than it exists today? I would say first and foremost, please continue um, as you have to support our district and there's a variety of ways to do that. Um, our uh, capital um, master plan, we go to the taxpayers every cycle and say please continue to support the very important dollars that we need as property owners to invest in the infrastructure of our schools, to invest in the technology that our students need to be um, prepared to, to be the workforce for the next for the 21st century. So if we can continue to vote and support our public schools, um, there are so many opportunities to be a volunteer, to be a grandparent or parent helping in a classroom, to reading to youngsters. Um, again, I think if you go to APS.edu, there are links that you can go and learn about how to become a volunteer, you can donate. There's so many ways to help the, the students in, in APS. Absolutely, and whether your um, children have already graduated and are no longer in school, this is not just about helping the students now, it's about helping this city and this society continue uh, to grow and to succeed. And my, my answer is always, you know, just to stay informed. <clears throat> There's so much to know about the district, and I think the schools of choice are going to be a really uh, fabulous thing. It's going to be exciting to watch, and hopefully a year from now you'll both come back and tell us about all the progress we've made, but everything from creating internships within businesses to finding out exactly what it is that goes on within Albuquerque Public Schools. I think one of the most challenging things, and it's got to be in the marketing of these new schools, is there's so much information anymore mm -hmm. to really sort of figure out what you need to know and, and go and learn about it. We have just a couple of minutes left. Very briefly, would you like to say um, where you hope to be a year from now? I hope a year from now we will have families um, calling in, sending in applications online to say how do I get my child signed up for one of these wonderful schools of choice, whether it's um, one of our STEM middle schools that will be coming online in school year 2015-16. Um, I hope to be able to report out how well attended our schools of choice fair in December will be. Um, so I really hope to be able to say we've got the community excited about our schools and we've got them willing to sign up and send their children there. Wonderful. Briefly, Mark? I just hope we're advising other districts on how we did these great successes and and further along in this process and and I hope that people will call us for information there and there's always a lot of bad information out there and people had a lot of hearsay about a big district but really any questions that they should contact our office and we'll answer any questions they have Terrific. Thank you both for joining us today, Mark Tolley and Katarina Sandoval. Again, I'm Monica Armento. We're glad that you could join us today. Please remember it's APS.edu. If you have any more questions or if this in any way piqued your interest, find out what all the schools are that might be open. Find out how you might be able to help. And we hope that you'll stay tuned for the next edition of APS 30. Thanks for watching.